Hi, my name is Monique Hernandez. I'm a telemetry nurse at Riverside Community Hospital, where I serve as a union steward. I'm also on the Labor Management Committee and the Staffing Committee. More recently, I was on our bargaining team last year. Early February, we got some good news. The governor had put an end to the expedited pandemic safe staffing waivers that CDPH was handing out to our hospitals in California like candy. We did this with months of lobbying Sacramento and sharing our real life examples of why maintaining safe nurse to patient ratios is so important. Then later in February, assembly member Jesse Gabrielle introduced assembly bill 1422 to bring nurses voices into the decisions around granting waivers. Together, one-to-one -one RN members will fight to make sure this becomes a law, but more on that later. In my hospital, waivers have meant that there was a higher risk of patient injury. For example, falls, decreased patient satisfaction, subpar care due to increased workload, which then in my humble opinion is a catalyst, not only for moral injury to the nurse, but it can increase nurse burnout. Waivers dehumanize our patients. Care was taken away from them when they needed us the most. No family at bedside, scared and very sick. Every time a waiver is used, you are ignoring healthcare workers' voices and taking advantage of not only their compassion, but their work ethic. Waivers fail to adequately protect the community the hospital serves. Unfortunately, we're still fighting this. Hospitals are still getting waivers, but it's back to how it was before. Waivers are only granted on by a case-to-case -case basis when hospitals can show unprecedented circumstance. But here's the bottom line. We know that CDPH listens more to management right now, and we're still using all of our union power with political and public pressure and media coverage. But it's going to be up to us on the inside of our hospitals to enforce safe staffing, whether or not our hospital has a waiver. So here's what we can all do. Step one, know your ratios. Know what the nurse to patient ratio is supposed to be for your department. You'll find that at this link, bit.ly slash title 22 ratios. Find it in the list of links below, along with all the other websites I'll mention during this training. I get to my shift early to ensure that my assignment is safe before I clock in. If it's not, I refuse the assignment or make suggestions on how to balance out the acuities. You have the right to refuse a unsafe assignment. For me, I feel morally obligated to refuse it in order to ensure patient safety and to protect my license and my profession. Otherwise, the hospital keeps on cutting more and more corners. It has to stop and it has to stop with us. Step two, enforce safe staffing. Let's do everything we can to enforce safe staffing, whether or not there's a waiver. That includes making sure our stewards and union leaders know what's happening. Is our hospital doing all that it can to avoid giving you more patients? Are they still flexing, canceling travelers? Are they posting vacancies to hire more nurses? Are nurse managers scrubbing in to help? In addition to making sure the union knows, let's also ask our supervisors what steps are being taken to ensure that they are doing everything they can to keep us in ratio. And if you feel like your assignment is unsafe, even if there's a waiver in place, be sure to fill out an ADO. And here's the link, bit.ly slash one-to-one RN underscore ADO. You'll also find it in the list of links below. Don't forget all the ADO steps. 
forward it to your supervisor and your union rep slash organizer. And here's another idea to make this even stronger. The next time you're out of ratio on your unit, work together and all of you complete an ADO on your shift. All of you send it to your supervisor. This is union power. Step three, report violations. If a hospital does not have a waiver, then it's time to really enforce the stop repeat offender hospital bill we won in 2019. Here's another important link on that. Bitly slash enforce ratios. Again, work with your stewards and union rep slash organizer to get the ball rolling on this. The time is up for repeat offender hospitals. Step four, be vigilant. If your hospital has a waiver allowing them to increase the number of your patients, make sure the waiver is posted. If it is, take a picture and send it to your steward or union rep slash organizer. If it's not posted, then tell your steward or union rep slash organizer. So just to repeat, regardless of whether or not they have a waiver, hospitals must maintain diligent efforts to recruit and retain staff and to meet required staffing levels at all times. If we push hard enough, maybe CDPH will investigate and require hospitals to provide documentation of their efforts. Maybe they will revoke a waiver. And like I said, we are also working with leaders in Sacramento to bring more transparency and accountability to the waiver process. No more giving waivers out like candy. Learn more at this link, bit.ly slash AB 1422 intro. To help us pass this law, let us know how waivers affected patient care. Click on the AB 1422 My Story link below and consider joining us at our next lobby and media training on April 15th. Thanks for listening. I want to share one final thought. We would have never come this far if all of you didn't raise your voice. We can't stop now in the fight to protect our ratios and our patients. The battle lines have been drawn. Let's stick together and win like us union nurses always do.